Hello there people, Snowcrash here, back with more Scrap Mechanic and back with my first tutorial which is going to be for my gyroscope invention which you probably all saw on the last episode and if you haven't, go check it out, the link's on the screen and in the description below So, basically, let me get out of this chair now this gyroscope which you see spinning over there and I'm going to show you how to build it has allowed a lot of people to do some very cool stuff. So uh, go check out the other episode because that explains what we use it for but it's used for stabilization and I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you how to build it. So basically get yourself a whatever it is your rocket ship your car whatever you're going to use it for. This is a movable platform it's it's uh, sitting on, uh, it's not attached to the ground. So as you can see there, there we go. All right. Uh, now, it's pretty straightforward. Get yourself some blocks. I'm going to change the, um, the color of the blocks here just so you can see how to build it. But you want to build it pretty much as, as lightly as you can. So maybe wood or something like that. Now these can be varying sizes or whatever. I'm going to talk about that in a moment as to what that's going to do. But we're just going to build a little small one at the moment. And I've just come up maybe five blocks like that. Throw a bearing on there like that. And what we're going to do is I might come out one. Ah, okay. So there's the first problem. Let's just stabilize this platform. Bring it down a little. Hop on and keep building. <laughs> so let's come out one, two, three, four, five. I'm just wondering whether that's enough. Yeah, I think that's enough. Come out here, one, two, three, four, five. You want this thing uh, an odd number, so you've got a block in the dead center there. All right, now what you're going to do is just come out a bit more like this, maybe six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we do have to make this thing symmetrical. Even though some of the components aren't going to be used, it's got to be balanced. So, We've got a bearing right there. We've done that. Now what we're going to do is add a bearing here. And you're just going to bring across another rod all the way like this, right up to the end. Now, that is not attached there, so don't worry about that. And remember that at the moment in Scrap Mechanic, everything's infinitely strong. If this was a real engineering project, it would be a disaster because this would be falling down. You'd need another bearing there. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, next what we're going to do is have to get up a tiny bit here and I think I might just put down a couple of blocks like that. And what I'm going to do is put a just another block there and I'm not going to get in the technicalities of the physics model in Scrap Mechanic, but theoretically you could put a bearing here and put two pieces out like that and have it spinning sideways like that. Uh, because joints are not uh, they're infinitely strong, but they're not rigid, okay? They are attached by very, very strong springs. That is not such a best idea. So what you do is put a block there and then put a bearing here like that. Now, what we're going to do is also just on top here, put our uh, another block of a different color here so you can see it. So that's going to spin around and... Really what you want in, in the real world is you want a very light arm out like that and something heavy on the end. So we'll switch back to wood and put another block there. Now we're going to repeat the same thing underneath. So if I can come around here and put a wood block there and a bearing there. I'm going to delete this guy here and we're just going to do the same thing, put a block there, I think we had two of those, one of those, yep, come around here. Now this thing's pretty close to the ground uh, but it isn't going to matter because we'll see it in action in a moment. Alright, so that's pretty much your gyroscope happening. There we go, put a motor on there and uh, where's a switch put a switch there and we'll connect it up like this now the only two bearings is this one and this one here now you are going to need to make sure that they're spinning in opposite directions okay put our switch onto the motor 
rev our motor up somewhere around there and turn it on and away we go all right so you'll see here that if i put the jack under there see how our gyroscope's tilting fantastic that's doing the job look just keep going until that thing hits the table which doesn't look like it's going to it's going to be just fine you can bring your jack over this side and it's going to tilt that way so if i turn this off grab a hammer i'll give you another quick example here uh, go to the hammer you'll see it can spin that way and it can spin that way so it sort of can spin in all three dimensions see and that allows it to stay level because those things are spinning and they want to stay flat and they don't want to move because they're spinning and it's all cool all right now the sensors this needs to come out here now why do we need these things here you'll see in a moment crouch down oh we can probably bring it out a little bit longer for there and for here balance it once again all right so how are we going to detect whether this thing's tilting it's pretty straightforward now your little sensors which if i get down here and grab one of those they detect any block uh within 10 uh 10 blocks out from the sensor so let me just raise that up a little there and we can do you don't have to have them on opposite sides but it balances it out if you're making a fairly lightweight uh you know fairly lightweight little spaceship or something you'd probably have the other sensor on this side it doesn't really matter bring it up here and if we can get there we go all right so i'm going to put my sensors on here now in this plane here i think it's that block there we will put a sensor we need it flat pointing out there and there and what is going to happen is as this thing goes up and down it will break the beam on these sensors here see so if i hit this with the hammer i may be able to get oh no we're still on a lift so take the lift off jump up here and switch to our hammer you see that there we go all right so that's working fine and the same on this side we will put and it's in the same plane i think i think no yes it is okay so it will be the sensors will be on the same level let's reset this thing again and put it down like that remove the jack all right and you'll see here on this one see that sensor just here is lit up because it's being broken by uh, this member here cutting across getting this thing in action we need to reset it put it back on the hoist drop it turn on the motor okay and if we put our hoist down we will see here we go all right if i jump up there somehow <laughs> you'll see there that that beam's now being broken across there little green lights on it's all cool and the same goes for the other direction if i put the hoist on this side and tilt it this way there we go if i can get up there have a closer look there we go all right so that's lit up because this is now tilted down and how would you use this that's up to your imagination basically you could connect these sensors to some thrusters which is just here and if it was tilting this way you could put a, uh, a thruster pointing i don't know pointing down like this to counteract that tilt and if we grabbed our connect tool into there there you go and now that's going to try to lift that side and it's as simple as that i'm not going to go into connecting up all the thrusters um what does work better by the way is not just having one thr <laughs> our platform's going to take off in a moment um is not just having one thruster trying to correct but also having um two thrusters in this sort of configuration uh it just what you want to do is try to spin the entire structure on its axis 
So you'd actually connect that sensor to both of these guys. And if we... There you go, see? So you've got this sort of double thruster trying to twist it and trying to tilt it back. And it's just a more stable arrangement, but it depends on how big your craft is, whether you can do that. Okay, all awesome. Let's drop this down. I've had a lot of people say that you can't trust the gyro. Once you tip too far, it goes into a spasm and all this. Look, it's, that's not entirely correct. The gyro works exactly as intended, and it comes down to your design. You need to put some dampening in uh, on smaller craft, otherwise you're going to get into an oscillation. Because when you're floating in the air, suddenly one side's going to try to correct, it's going to correct too much, and then the other side, it's just going to seesaw backwards and forwards, and that's just down to your design, guys. I mean, this is this can this is complicated physics. And um, one way, you know, another little trick I'll show you is grab a suspension member, whether it be the sports suspension or whatever. Have you thought about trying to put uh, your thruster on suspension to give it some dampening so it's not an immediate thrust effect. And so all these little tricks, these are things that engineers have been learning for literally a couple of hundred years. Um, all you guys are just starting to learn if you haven't formally studied it. So that will dampen your, your, your thrust effect for any, uh, you know, any reaction engines that you've got to try to stabilize it. So there's lots of things you can do to make this gyroscope work perfectly. Now, the smaller the gyroscope, the more angle your platform's going to be able to tilt before it kicks in, right? So we've got a fair bit of tilt there and it's still not kicked in. Now, how can you make that more sensitive? Well, it's very easy. Make the gyroscope or the sensing rods bigger. Now, if you come over to here, that's exactly what I've done. Uh, if I turn this off, you can see here we've got a very wide gimbal. And that would mean if I've got my sensors over here detecting this, only a slight movement, you know, on this platform is going to move that gimbal a lot and trigger the sensor. So the bigger this thing is and the longer these sensing rods, these are currently look like they're six long. I could even extend this out to maybe seven there. Uh, that's a very, very big extension. And of course it's unbalanced so that's going to tip but that's a very big extension so little movements in the platform are going to result in very big movements in the gyroscope or the movement of the gimbal so that's how you can make it more sensitive and with a little bit of dampening i think you'll find amazing things can happen so if you like this tutorial hit the thumbs up button and if you like the scrap mechanic stuff i do subscribe if you haven't already there's going to be a lot more coming out and I don't know how frequently with this kind of thing, it's a very new uh, game, uh, whatever you call it, sandbox. And so I'm just doing things, learning like all the other YouTubers, uh, trying to have a bit of fun on the way. And episodes are just going to go blip, blip, blip as I do things, as I come up with, uh, with stuff that's interesting. I am working on, you would have seen in the last episode, I am working on something big. A lot of you go, oh, clickbait, you know, it wasn't really what you said it was in the, in the description. But that was only the beginning. So things are happening. And I would say another video is going to drop in a couple of days. Something like that. Anyway, this has been Snow Crash. I'll catch you later. Cheers.